welcome to another edition of Atlanta Live. I am your host tonight, Dr. Deborah Harrell Isom, and let me tell you something, I am totally excited tonight because we have an amazing guest tonight. Okay, we have two amazing guests tonight, but one of them you know very, very well. She's a great woman of God doing great things for the kingdom of God, and her name is Dr. Let me get this right now because she's twisted it up on me a little bit. Dr. Ruth Pauline Palmer. She is absolutely a wonderful we know her as dr pauline key so you're gonna see when you see her, you're gonna say oh yes i know her you're gonna be so excited but let me tell you something she's not only going to um interview tonight and tell you listen she's living in israel now so she's going to talk to you about what that means to the christian world and she's also gonna sing and you know i love it when she sings for us so it's gonna be amazing do not move stay right there but right now we are gonna go to the song set we're gonna hear from so key music and she's gonna sing i'm here Sitting high, looking low, is your mad cause I'm free and your lies won't go me? If I bite so fixed, leave a one too mad cause it's blending home. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Everything for you, I do. It's no good when we are religious, believing in superstitions, baptizing their own afflictions. Look at me like I'm the vicious one. Not the way that I love him. No, you got me wrong. All the love I have inside, dominion and power strong. I serve the type of God that makes me know I'm every woman. I know what time it is when the blessings fall. I be up the sun. Every day my present helps, so I don't doubt them, doubt them. Too all the ones who want my crown too late, I got it, got it. Running through a troop, leaping over walls. No fear. Guess what? I'm here. 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 I'm
Well, um, we actually came to the States. Um, in 2019, my husband was consecrate, consecrated bishop um, of Israel for the Church of God in Christ. And that's like 6 million? That's 6.5 million um, uh, people in the United States. And so we represent them in Israel. And um, he started a program called A Weekend to Bless Israel. Right. And it starts off with meeting with bishops and pastors and just really sharing with them the importance of Israel and blessing Israel. Right. And then we uh, ended with an amazing uh, concert. And where was, was that? And, uh, we ended with a concert. And so this weekend, we were in uh, Newark, um, New Jersey, mm -hmm. and uh, we were par co-partnered with... Um, the bishops there of New Jersey uh, jurisdictions as well as the New Jersey um, Israel Commission. And they were celebrating Black History Month. Yes. Uh, and, um, and so and they called it a symphony of brotherhood. Amen. And it was phenomenal. I mean, all of the officials, government officials, uh, representatives, um, leaders from the community came out to celebrate. And it was a great time of uh, black and Jewish um, camaraderie. Fellowship. And it was just yeah. an amazing night. Amen. That is wonderful. But listen, you have always been uh, doing so many things for the kingdom and just wonderful ministry and all these things. But I just want you to talk to the people and talk about what it meant for someone as powerful already in ministry to actually move to Israel. Talk about that for us. Wow. Well, you know, Dr. Isom, I mean, you're the one that's awesome, okay? <laughs> we call her Awesome Blossom. She's oh, always no. been awesome. And, um, you know, but for someone like me to move there means that God has an assignment for me there. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and it has been definitely a journey, an experience, a great experience to really, really you know, see the word of God come off the pages yes. and that I can see things from a contextual point of view. I mean, as you know, I've studied. I don't have an honorary doctorate. I have an earned. earned doctorate. And so, but even with that, I mean, every day that I wake up and I, and, uh, and, and I breathe the air of Jerusalem, yes, yes. I am learning more and more and more about how awesome God is yes. and how yes. faithful he is and that he is truly a covenant keeping God. Mm -hmm. And not only looking at him from, a, from an antiquated place, mm -hmm. a historical place, yes. but looking at him uh, as the present God who is almighty, all knowing, omnipresent, and just seeing his glory, you know, I mean, and, and then too, I mean, just, you know, where we live, we live on a mountain in the center of Jerusalem. Yes. And to my, my left, I can see the city of Bethlehem, mm. but I can also see the story of the, of, of, of the, you know, from Abraham, yeah. you know, up to Jesus and to see where he left and know that he's coming back Ooh. again in that same place. And it's just looking with expectancy. Um, it's just been amazing. Um, just, you know, of course. So the question is, what is it like for someone like me? Yes. Um, it is to definitely um, know that whatever I've been given is now multiplied mm. and that if I ever was a blessing, <clears throat> I want to be a multiplied blessing <laughs> to God's people because Amen. I want them to experience what I've experienced. And I think, you know, being uh, an Atlanta, um, Atlantean for 30 years, <laughs> um, you know, in working with having the opportunity to work with, you know, John, um, you know, Senator John, Congressman John Lewis. Yes. And, and, um, and, you know, and just being here with all of the historical, the SCLC, and really having that opportunity. Um, you know, Dr. Coretta Scott King has really um, helped me to understand what my role is yes. in terms of humanity, mm -hmm. in terms of social change, in terms of bridging gaps uh, between one na one culture to another, and what it really means to be on the front line to do that, and um, and so I, I, I you know I understand that um, even from a biblical perspective. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. Um, you know you were talking in the green room and you were talking about the fact that 
Um, you know, I was watching this, looking at television, and, and this these uh, this couple were they were going to get married, mm -hmm. and they were saying that they were from a different country, and um, both of them, one was from one country, one was from another country, and they were going to get married. But every time they would. In one state, they were going to get married in another state, but they wouldn't do it because on all of the license, they would ask them to check what race they were. And they said in their country, that's not even on anything. It's not on a, a application for for work or anything. And so they said they weren't. They they said they weren't going to do it. So they finally moved to Florida, and they went through all this stuff, and they took it off. And they said, okay, you don't have to put do that, and you can get married. But we were talking in the green room, and you yeah. were saying that race is not such a big deal like it is here in that, America. There, talk yeah, about race that. Race does not identify you there. Mm -hmm. It's not race that identify you there. You know, here in, you know, in, in West, we are, in terms in the of West, being yeah. Western, right. mm -hmm. nice, um, we look at everything black and white. Right. But they look at, they identify you by your faith. Who, yeah. who are you, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, and that's a beautiful <clears throat> thing because a lot of people don't know that the Jewish race is is a it's 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 a race of many colors. Exactly. And um, and, and it so, can't be a white race because it's in that in the eastern part of the world where there are dark complexion people. Yes, I mean there's so <laughs> much so. diversity. There's so much diversity. Exactly. And, and what I love is you know the the unity. There are so many things that I've learned there that that really helps to strengthen you know, who they are, exactly. you know, yeah. And, yeah. and to really see God's covenant play out in their lives on a daily basis and to see what, you know, because a covenant is a, is a mutual undertaking of two parties binding themselves together in order to fulfill an obligation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So both parties have an obligation. Uh, and and so, so God is in covenant with the land, and with the people. Yeah. And so to, to, to see that play out, how they play their part out, is so amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I so want that, you know, to, to bring the revelation and understanding, exactly. um, you know, to people in America and to help people to understand why is it important for you to bless Israel? Hmm. Why is it important for you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem? I mean, it, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Everyone must come. Everyone. The, what, uh, it's wonderful. I've been there. I haven't lived there, but I have visited there and it yeah. was a life changing uh, uh, type of experience. And uh, well, any, anytime you leave the United States and go to the eastern part of the, the world is, is absolutely uh, uh, ch life changing because, you know, well, as anywhere, we know, anytime you go anywhere is life changing. <laughs> <laughs> but anytime, you know, we gotta say this leave the West and go yeah. to the East. <laughs> anytime you, because life began yeah. in the eastern uh, part of the, uh, of the world. It but does, it, but you know, what I, um, I, I say um, that there's no land like Israel right, right, right. because that's God's land. God chose that land for himself. Yes, and he yes, chose those, those people to show who he is, his loving kindness and his faithfulness through to hum humanity, yes, you know, to, yes, throughout yes. all humanity. Yeah. And, and, and that land tells the story of God. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it tells who he is in his awesomeness. Yes, I mean, when you awesome. ride, and, you know, we see mountains, you know, but there are no mountains like the mountains yeah, yeah. in Jerusalem. It's a different kind of thing. It, it really and, is a and, different kind yes, of thing. It's just, because we, we were riding in the bus and we saw this man dressed like he was right at the Bible <laughs> and he was shepherding sheep going over this. I was like, what is this? We have just stepped <laughs> out of time into something else. So you are right. Yes. But we got to hit this. You just talked about what covenant is. Yes. And we understand and know that you're a part. One of the ministries that you are uh, the apostle of is uh, Covenant Daughters International Ministries. Now, let's talk about that just a little bit. Yes. Covenant Daughters uh, International Ministries have been in existence since 1999, and we are a mentorship program for women. And our job is to help to provide vehicles for them, uh, also to help train them, you know, in leadership and, and to help them to reveal their leadership presence to the world and to give them the tools that they need to represent 
the, their best selves to the world, yeah. spirit, soul, and body. And so we do that through uh, many means. A lot of you know, people are looking for areas to serve in in church. Mm -hmm. Well, we serve in the community. Mm -hmm. We find whatever we can do uh, to, to build the community. Yes. And so we have different programs. Like uh, now we, and I have a wonderful team, a shout out to these women who have been with me, some of them over 20 years Praise when we God. first started. Amen. And um, we, we do a lot of great things in the community. As you know, I've always been a community oh, organizer. Yeah, you are. I yes. love my community here in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. And so I have put, I put sweat in it because I believe in the best that uh, you know of people yeah and uh, so now what we do is we have a program a feeding program mm -hmm. where we feed um, um, 1600 families a month and that's here in the state and that's in that's here in the state so we still do that even though I'm in Israel um, I have a wonderful general manager who oversees that um, we also have started a program called Black Family Friday. Talk about the feeding program. Talk about the, what y'all are doing with that. The feeding program. That's, you know, that's my heart, and I know that's yes. very important. Yes. And you I might get somebody on you, fire. Yes. Uh, once uh, down yes, to the yes, missions. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, More than once, was it? I yeah, it was. it was a couple of times. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> and um, um, now the feeding program, you know, um, what we like to say is our mission is, is we're, um, you know, delivering hope and fighting hunger. Yes, and yes. The, the food is just a way to, you know, really help them to with their budget, monthly budgets. Yes. Because yes, I yes. believe that if you can feed people, then you can cut down on crime. Oh yeah. You, you can, can cut down right. on violence. You that's can cut right. down on all of those things that people feel that they have to do these things in order to have. Yeah. And so food is a major, major uh, commodity in families. But what we also do is we have um, technology programs that with women, we have a, t a program called Technology uh, Inclusion Program, yes. which we teach, um, you know, our, our oldest student was 85 years old. Wow. And so we teach them computer skills, help them to get acclimated into society because, you know, to, to bridge the gap between the now generation and the generations uh, the, the older generations, because that's where the gap, the technology exactly. gap. Exactly, that's true. And so that's we true. Um, we provide programs, you know, like that. And then now we have um, the Black Family Friday program, which we are encouraging, you know, families to get together. Um, shut off the phones, mm -hmm. shut off the television. Um, one of the things in Israel that I really love, um, that really really touched my heart, every Friday um, at two o'clock the country shuts down. Yeah. They have flower booths on side of the road and men are getting flowers for their wives, fresh flowers. Praise God. And, um, and then, but, but to make a long story short, it's a time they welcome in Shabbat. The, mm -hmm. It's Thanksgiving every weekend. Amen. They come together as a family. They remind each other of their history mm -hmm. and they remind themselves of who God is and they have fun and they yeah. have food and fellowship. And so that's what we've started in terms of um, and so we have about 500 families that have signed up, um, mm -hmm. and um, and we are going to start having the major dinners, you know, uh, just to teach the principles of how to have holy time with your family. Yeah, that's beautiful. You know, yeah. and uh, so that's a program that we do, and then we're starting. Um, and I don't know how much time we have because you know I understand all of this, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. but um, my baby is. The, uh, and we are launching it this month in, in uh, recognition of Women's History Month. Right, right. And that is Global Women in Media Alliance. Oh, very Global nice. Global Women Media Alliance. Because as you know, I've been in media for over 25 years. Yes, And I yes. believe that we have to raise up the next generation of women and, and young ladies in media. And so we are starting the alliance. We're going to uh, teach them everything they need to do. We're going to bring together leaders like yourself who've, who are professionals in this. And not just media, Christian media. Oh, yeah. That's my mm -hmm. target. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Because um, I believe that we need to help 
them to understand that God is using technology. And so we can still use the word, use technology to send the message of hope to others. And so we're going to be, we have uh, women who are uh, from all over the world yes. that are going to be coming together and holding up my arms in this. And, um, and so we are very excited about that. So that's going to be this March. Amen. And um, so, I mean, I was just, I mean, whatever my hands find to do. Well, that's right. Yes. That's what you're doing. And I can't, and we, I, we just, um, uh, two partners, um, we created a game called Ebeneopoly. Yes. Okay, uh, that's, uh, that sounds perfect, but let me tell you something. You have so much to talk about. I do. Until we're going to stretch this out a okay. little bit longer. We're going to have you, you know, in the next segment, come back and really talk yeah. about some other things that you're, you're out there doing. But you want me to tell you something. What I believe is going on right now is you're firing some people up. Yeah. You're causing them to begin to look on the inside of themselves and begin to see what it is that God is calling them to do. Yes. Because right now, uh, 2023 is the year of celebration. Yes. So we, we have to celebrate the gifts and the callings that God has placed on the inside right. of us so that we can go forward and do greater. We're going to go back to the song set. And we're going back to Soki Music, and she's going to sing for us, Mira, Don't Lie to Me.
for Christ's sake. I delight in weaknesses and in insults and in hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. back listen um <laughs> i know this woman is amazing her her music i'm saying this woman but you know uh who i'm talking about i am talking about the the great so key and her music is beautiful and you listen guys you got, she's going to tell us how we can get her music into our uh, library because it's just absolutely beautiful 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 music she's worked with canton jones and she's you know done a lot of things uh, uh around the country so you're going to want to get uh her music and get involved with uh, who she is because uh, she's a powerful woman of god and we are going to go back and talk more with the powerhouse who we know as dr pauline key but who is dr ruth pauline Plummer. she's an awesome Awesome woman of God. Now talk about the fact you said that you invented a game. Well, talk about that. Actually, and you've I been did. on CBS promoting it. Talk this about morning, it. actually. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, two partners and I um, co-created a game called Ebonyopoly. Okay. And it came out of the Fridays that I was telling you about that when families get together in yeah. Israel and they, sh they remember, they, ha they have a phrase, and it's avadim hainu, mm -hmm. and that means that we were slaves, but God brought us out. Amen. And they say that to each other every Friday, and they teach their children their history, you know, because... I mean, if you, if you don't remember your history, you're you repeated. You're to repeat it. That's right. That's and right. so, um, you know, as a community, we are always, we are always uh, saying, you know, well, um, they are not teaching our children, they are not teaching our children, but I feel that it's our responsibility it to help our children understand our American history. And so that's what my partners and, and I wanted to do. And it was during the time of, you know, after, um, George Floyd and all of that right. had taken place. Um, and it was just so much just um, hurt over the nations, the, the generation, especially the young generation. And it is important for them to um, have um, Excuse me. educational uh, the uh, of, uh, opportunity for American history uh, mm -hmm. in a way where they can understand it, that it doesn't make them bitter, but it makes them better, mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, so the game came, you know, out of that. And also um, it's, it's unique because the cards have um, the QR codes on the back. And so even though they're playing the game, it's in a monopoly, you know, kind of platform, mm -hmm. but you can scan the card and it'll um, take them to that very place of the street and, uh, and give them a little bit more history about it. Yeah. So basically what we wanted to do was to give them, um, you know, um, education on American history that they are not privy to in the regular school settings. Right. And so that's why we created the game and it also teach financial uh, principles and so forth. So it's just fun. And so if you like Monopoly, then that's, you know, that's what that is. It, and, but it's teaching the, rec, uh, the Reconstruction era. Amen. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Okay, Reconstruction. Reconstruction uh, era. After slavery. Yes. When, yeah, that yes. was, uh, that, that's, that is a, a segment of history that needs to be taught. Yes. Because during that time, black people were really doing well, you yes. know, until Jim Crow came in and began to, to wipe that out. And uh, so that is, that is uh, something that if you're out there and you're, you're wanting, well, she's going to give her information about how to contact her and how to get her books, because she has several books on, on Amazon, and then she has the game. So she's going to give you information as to how to get those things into your home. They're going to be a blessing 
uh, to your life. Okay, woman of God, we got so much to talk about. Uh, um, GWMA. Yes, that's the Global um, Women's Media Alliance, yeah. as we discussed earlier, where we're going to be uh, training the next generation of women in media. So is and that a part of, I know you have a, a television network, is that does, tell, talk about it. Yes. Yeah, tell so, them everything. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, um, the alliance is to really, really have a safe place to where women in media can come together mm -hmm. and be able to share ideas and establish long-lasting relationships mm -hmm. as well as um, be given the tools. And, and we have a lot of wisdom. Yeah. We have a lot of recipes mm -hmm. for uh, women in media yeah, yeah, because yeah, we've yeah. been in it a long time. Exactly. I yes, think people yes. would say, you know, we are generals in, 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 in the Christian media space. Yes. Well, we have wisdom that we need to pass down. We do not need to leave this earth with all of the wisdom that we have in us. We need to make sure that the next generation is able to carry on you know, uh, through media, that they have everything that they need. And so um, it is a safe place where we can all come together. We have women from every nation, I mean women from Nepal uh, uh, who are in media, who have media schools in Nepal. We have uh, uh, um, the Philippines, I mean women from all over, India. Um, that are coming together and that's going to hold up my arms in this Praise so that God. we can make sure that we um, teach this next generation. Okay, so is there a conference media. connected with this? We, are, we, have, we're, we have webinars uh -huh. that we will be doing, that we will, um, at least six uh, webinars a year, where right. we do our training, training webinars, and then we will have a conference in Israel Very as good. well as in uh, the U.S. Um, you know, because at, in Christian media, we tell God's story. <laughs> so you, you know, I mean, we've been telling God's story on faith, but now we need to put our faith, uh, you know, some legs and come and see what it's really all about. And so that's what we really want to encourage. So now, uh, uh, Dr. Jennifer was uh -huh. telling me mm -hmm. that she spoke at a conference that you had in Israel. Talk about that. Another Jennifer, and also another one of my students. Oh God, she's an actress. I forget her name. Oh God, she writes plays and. Yeah. She was there. You, she spoke there as well. You don't even know her name. No, but oh, I, I know exactly what you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, talk and, about um, it. That was in this past July. We yeah. had our first holy convocation there in Israel. And I had my first ladies' luncheon. It was the very first. Uh, yeah. And we had um, Consul General Anat Dadan, mm -hmm. um, who is the Consul General of Israel in, that lives in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I always like to say um, we, we, we're trading places yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because she lives here and I live there, and it all most happened, you know, simultaneously. At the same time. Yes. <laughs> right. And uh, she has been a, a really great mentor for me as well, just, you know, just watching to see how she is just loving on our community and yeah. how she's really involved. And it's, it's so, um, you know, refreshing. And, uh, and so her and then 17 um, black um, women legislators Praise God. from across the U.S. came to the luncheon as my very special guest, um, uh, Senator Tanya Anderson, right here from, you know, um, the Atlanta I've area. Her. I've met her. Wonderful. Yep. Uh, I've met she her. sang. And um, so we, we just had a wonderful time. And then we had about, I would say, 120 women from our church. Mm -hmm. uh, that came as well. And so that was a phenomenal time. So it was awesome. I, she, Jennifer told me, she said it was, it was, yes, uh, it was, it was wonderful. Really, really amazing. And that's, I'm so excited. This uh, coming um, July um, is the first of our Women of the Bible tour. Yes, you were talking and, about, tell um, us about that. And so we have 150 women from the U.S. Mm -hmm. that are coming. We have lady right right from here, Atlanta. Uh, lady Kathleen Steele will be with us. She will be speaking on Martin Luther King Jr. Street. Amen. <laughs> in Israel, and uh, so we are very excited about that. We have um, Archbishop Ruth Smith. Yes. Um, that will be with us, my mom, yes, know, my mentor. Yes, 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 yes. And um, so she will be with us, and we have um, uh, um, 
Bishop Coletta Vaughn, and many powerful women that will be joining us from all over. And uh, we're going to travel through the Bible land, and we're going to go to the places where women who have us inspired us and learn about their lives and the culture and where they lived and and, and glean wisdom from their lives so that we can really see it in a context. And this will be the beginning of an educational program for women yeah. um, so that, you know, women will be able to come every year and study there in Israel. Yeah. And I'm very excited about this because, as you know, I really love to teach the Word of God. And so um, this is a great place for women in ministry. Women leaders can come and study you Praise know, women in leadership. So I'm very yes, excited about yes, that. Yes, that sounds great. Now talk about your books. I know you've written uh, several books. Uh, what what are we what are we going to be telling them to go and and, and buy? <laughs> yes. So the the latest book, of course, you know, my first book was Carriers of Vision, exactly. and then my second book was um, um, I'm Every Woman, and it, it's okay. it's a foundational. A uh, book for women in ministry who would yeah. who wants to be uh, okay. I'm in ministry. every woman. Talk I'm about every that. Woman. What is that? What, what is that going to uh, provide for the reader? That's going to provide for them a strong foundation in understanding women ministry. You know, women ministry it has to be built, and so there is a foundation that has to be laid. An understanding of women, our role, um, you know, in church our role with Jesus, you know, and how, you know, how Jesus saw us, um, how to balance our lives as women in ministry, you know, um, and what does it really mean to be a woman in ministry? Yeah. Um, and, and one of the things that I've learned is that as women in ministry, we are not in competition with men. We are, in, we are camaraderies to yes. men. Yes. We are here to hold them up and, and help um, and, and to lead. I like the fact that you said, you said we're not in competition with men, and that's a biggie. Because yes. even inside families, sometimes that's the problem, husbands, wives, that kind of thing. But you know what? As I was driving, the Lord kept telling me, he said, we need to tell women that they're not in competition with each other. No. Because God has set a certain path yes. for each one of us. Yes. You know, and I, if we get if we begin to think, God, show me my path. Yes. Then we'll we'll begin to And the uh, beautiful thing, as you that. said, he has a path for everyone. Everybody. You everybody. know, but unfortunately, you know, everyone do not discover what that path is. Unfortunately. And that's why we exist as Covenant Daughters International yes. Ministries, is to help them to discover that path. Who they are. Discover who you are and know that you've been given two things, okay? You've been given a birth date and you've been given a termi uh, termination date. Absolutely. And everything in between, we Absolutely. want to help you feel it. Woman of God, let me tell you something. This one hour was way too short. <laughs> we need three hours, five hours, because you're just doing so much for the kingdom, and you just have so much to offer uh, the world, just in your wisdom and in your knowledge and your understanding. Quickly, give a, uh, a way for the uh, audience to uh, find you. Yes, well, you can simply go to our website, www.covenant daughtersinternational.org or if you want to find out more about our television and media uh, program then you want to go to covenantdaughters.tv Amen I am just so excited about this interview I mean I, and, and seeing you again because it's been several years oh since, since God, I've seen you Oh my God it's been a while I know but listen you're beautiful you're wonderful and you're anointed as all get out and you're still doing great things for the kingdom Listen guys we're going to hear from her in just a little bit she's going to sing for us but we're going to go back to So Key Music and she's going to sing for us Free to Be Me <laughs> Just keeps taunting me 
She don't like what I said. He can't stand what I have. They don't understand who I am. But I had to see that the best gift to myself was me being me. Put my heart in a trap, watch the best me giving in. Now I know that when you love yourself, that's the heart of being so free. Being free. Thank you very much for tuning in to uh, Atlanta Live. It's such a wonderful blessing to me to see that people have faith and confidence in the prayer of the saints. And so they call with their issues and we share God's word. That's where the scripture comes in. It's wonderful for us to be able to talk to people about their problems, but what does God have to say about it? And so before you put your head on the pillow tonight, I want you to turn to the book of Psalms and read the first five verses of Psalm 92. And you will rejoice in that. And then, of course, over here on 95, sing unto the Lord, bless his name, show forth his salvation from day to day. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. All you have to do is lift your heart and life up to God. God hears you. He knows what's going on in your life, and he wants to bring joy to you as you worship him. And thank you. And call us again, 770-300-9828. Thank you very much. Now back to the studio. Praise the Lord. I tell you, we are just so excited about tonight. Tonight has been wonderful. Uh, guys, I'm telling you, I told y'all 2023, 20, the year of celebration, we need to be celebrating God and all that he's done because when you're, while you're celebrating him, he's going to be opening new doors. Mm. Absolutely. Now, listen, you've been listening to Soki all night and looking at her gl glimmer and glow and with her background uh, 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 singers, her kids. 
they're cute enough. And now we're going to actually talk to her because she has a lot to say. How are you doing tonight? I am doing wonderful. Thank you. You are amazing, girl. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. You, your voice <laughs> Thank you. is just so beautiful. Thank you. It's like silk flowing uh -huh. out of your mouth. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. I'm telling you, it's, it's, a, it's really amazing. Now, talk to me. Um, so you told me in the in the green room you've been actually born again for like 23 years. Yes, I have. And your your born again uh, experience was a little bit different because you <laughs> you weren't you didn't grow up like in church. Right. Talk about talk about your born again experience. Oh, my born again experience, like you said, it was very unique. Yes. Very um. Unique. So I you know went through a, a stage in my life. Reality, I was a single mother at the time. Um, I had a daughter and I was struggling. Right. And so I called my dad and I'm at home crying and he's like, you need to go to church. <laughs> and I said, well, fine, I'll go to church. I'm going to church and I'm driving and I'm crying and getting upset <laughs> and I don't know what I was doing with myself. So I got upset enough to turn around and get ready to go home. I turned around to go home with tears in my eyes. I passed my own place to live. <laughs> So when That's I, not funny, but it's funny because we've been there, you know? <laughs> exactly. So when I got ready to turn around, I heard this big, powerful voice say, park and get out. My God. I didn't even know where I was turning around at. I paid no attention to where I was, and I was in a churchyard. And I said, wow. I said, that voice is so powerful. I said, let me, let me see what's going on. So I parked the car. I got out. I went in. I was so blessed I got saved that day. Glory be to God. <laughs> Hallelujah, girl, that is beautiful. You know, because most people tell your story, oh, it took me 10 years. <laughs> took you one day. One day. But you know what? The, 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 the thing about that is when we hear God and we do what he tells us to do, mm -hmm. you know, that's what he asks us to do. Hear mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. obey me. Mm -hmm. it, you know, when we do that, it doesn't take forever and forever and forever. It's mm -hmm. just right away. Right away. That's so powerful. Now, listen, right. you are a writer. You you not only write music, but you write stage plays and film. Yes. Talk about that. Oh my goodness. Um, I, I discovered that I was a writer as an adult, but I had been writing my entire life and didn't even realize, exactly. I didn't understand my purpose at the time. When I was in school, um, my teachers used to always say, you're so smart, but you just don't apply yourself. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? You know, because during testing, <laughs> I'd be writing. <laughs> So instead of doing my test, I'm writing a poetry, a poem. Yeah. And one, one day my teacher comes to the, uh, she tells me, come to the front and read what you just wrote. And I was like, I'm so embarrassed. But when I read what I had down, she was like, wow. See? She was like, this is what you need to be doing. You know, I wasn't great in math, but language arts, I was advanced in. Yes. And I didn't put all of that together until I got, became an adult. Yeah. Um, and I was in, when I had joined the church, I was looking for something to keep me busy so I'll stay out of the world. Exactly. <laughs> and I got into the drama ministry. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I started writing. And I started discovering that I was great at this. So I started acting first. And then I started going outside of the church and really ministering through my acting. Yeah. And I got to a place where God started, you know, downloading this, this script in me. And the title of it is Deliver Our Mail, which is M-A-L-E. Oh, and so the script God. was from a male's perspective, which is how I knew it came from God, because exactly. I'm not a man. I don't exactly. understand, you know. Um, but it's about a young man that was from the streets, mm -hmm. and he was looking to God for a way out, yeah. um, because he was brought into the streets by family. You know, the traditional, this is how we make money. Um, he had been in and out of prison, but he was tired, and he wanted to surrender and mm -hmm. give his life to Christ. So that's what that stage production was about, and I was able to produce that. Um, have it at different stage productions like uh, Porter Sanford. I had it at the Rialto downtown Atlanta. Oh, amen. Mm -hmm. And nice. so COVID happened <laughs> and yeah. I had to put it on pause, but I'm getting ready to do it again because a lot of my actors are like, when? Like, I need you to put this back on. Um, so that's a part of my production. I know that was pretty long, but, um, you know, as far as writing film, I have uh, film scripts that I've written, preparing to do those. I have books that I've written, um, preparing to publish those. I do have a uh, um, journal that I've created, and it's on Amazon, and it's titled No Prisons. Oh. And it's no physical prison, no mental prison, no financial prison. Very good. Very and it good. gives you an opportunity to write in that journal how you feel, and it also asks in the journal to give your, your increase. You know, like, have I increased from the way I felt day one? Yeah. You know, have I leveled up, you know, mentally from day one? You know, so... 
that. Beautiful. I think that is so beautiful. Now, you know, I know the kids, some of your background, three of your background, those were three of your kids, right? Yes. <laughs> now, I just got to throw this out here because when I look at you, you look so good. You look so young. You have eight kids? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. What in the world? You must have started having kids when you were 12, right? Oh, my God. It felt like it. I feel like I've been a mom my whole life. That's, <laughs> and it's funny because I'm an only child. That's what it is. You I wanted to have a lot of kids because you were the only Well, I'm going to toss that on to my husband. He wanted a lot of kids. Oh. No, but I'm, I'm happy. My kids, as you see, I take them everywhere I go. Yeah, you talked about how, how they are very advanced children. Yes. Very smart and yes. honor students and things like that. Yes, I have children that are in honors classes. Um, doing very well in school, track. Yeah. I have three track stars. Yeah. Um, I have a dancer. Um, one of my young ladies, she didn't get a chance to show her work, but she teaches dance. Um, my son, he's in this, this program called Upward Bound. Oh, yeah, I love that program. Yes. That is a really good program. Listen, I, I know you got a lot to say about that, <laughs> but girl, we got to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Your plays, how, how, would, how would someone get in contact with you if they want to be involved in, in your plays, if they want to get your music, if they want to, you know, find you to come out and speak, or, you know, whatever? How yeah. do they get in contact with well, you? Well, all of my social media is under Soki Music, which is S-O-Q-I okay. Music, spelled properly, M-U-S-I-C. Yeah. Um, you can find me there. I also have my own event space right now that I own, and I do my auditions there, you know, so you can go to my website which is harris-renee.com mm -hmm. or you can email me at contact at harrisrenee.com and either or and you can so are, are um, actresses and actors free to contact you and yes absolutely because you're about to start this up again right yes absolutely, yeah. absolutely. that sounds good now talk about this unique name of yours how do we get to that <laughs> well so it's cute. very cute thank very you cute. thank so you cute. and i know it's different um so key actually is a japanese name that means healing energy. And when I came across that, I was like, I want to be unique whenever I'm presenting myself. So people used to always call me Kiki growing up. And I'm like, you got Kiki Sheard, you got Kiki Palmer, you got Kiki um, Shepard. I was like, I want to be a unique Kiki. So one day I was typing in my phone and my phone uh, came up as so key. And I kept saying, no, that's not how you spell it. So I looked it up and I was like, oh, that is me. See, the Lord was trying to tell you something. Yes. Now listen, I just want to let you know something. Uh, God uh, is really uh, moving in you, oh. and he's really going to uh, take you to some new uh, places, some new spaces, wow. and he's going to begin to introduce you to some new people. Wow. And the Lord said it's because of your faithfulness. It's because you have desired mm -hmm. to, to hear him and to, and to be led uh, by him. And, and God says you have a very uh, malleable spirit. Wow. He's able to speak to you and you move according to that which you hear in, in your spirit. So the Lord said he's going to begin to give you some new directions. Wow. He's going to begin to show you and highlight you to people that people that they've seen you already. Wow. But they just thought, oh, that's just her. You know, but God says he's about to highlight you. Wow. He's about to show you to some people who are going to be able to move you to that next place, that next mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said when he does that, he wants you to be very faithful to um, bring up that next generation. Wow. He said he's going to even open some doors for you to begin to mentor and to teach and to train. Wow. And he said because that's already in you in the place, in the first place. He's already placed that in you. So he said in this season, he wants you to begin to uh, uh, to grab hold to that. Yeah, oh my yeah, God, this has been an I awesome show tonight, guys. Yeah. I want you all to know that we have had an amazing show tonight and I want you to contact these two women because they're gonna be a blessing to you. And you know what? We're gonna have a beautiful song from the powerful woman of God, Dr. Pauline Plummer. And after that, we're going home. So you have an amazing <laughs> night. She's gonna sing for you, Lightning the Load. Amen. Amen. I'm reminded of a Bible story of a very sick man and his friends. They heard that Jesus was in town, so they lifted the roof to let him down. And we're to be the same way as they were in yesterday. We're to help each other. You're my sister, my brother. Can you help me lighten this load? Please give me strength to travel this road. Cause this burden that I bear gets easier knowing, knowing you are there.
to die. Many breeze passed them by. It's a shame they didn't even try. A Samaritan came along. He paid the price to make him strong. It didn't matter. Pray for each other, hold each other up, keep each other.